Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Selling Greenville, your favorite real estate podcast here in lovely Greenville, South Carolina. I'm your host as always, Stan McCune, realtor right here in Greenville, South Carolina, and you can find all of my contact information in the show notes if you need to reach out to me for any of your real estate needs. And just a reminder as always, please like, rate, review, subscribe, all of those good things with regard to the show. Make sure you don't miss any future episodes and please if you need a realtor in Greenville, like this is the most important thing, guys. If you need a realtor in Greenville or even outside of Greenville, because I got a relocations department, please contact me. I'm your guy. Th- I don't make money from the podcast. I mean, just a little bit from uh, from our sponsor, Piper Insurance Group, who, who I will get to in a second. Um, but, uh, but I don't make a whole lot of money from this podcast. I make money from you guys, the listeners, deciding to use me as your uh, real estate agent. And so that's what keeps me going for now over four years of providing this content. So please do that. And uh, and please make sure, as I've already said, subscribe, rate, review, so you don't miss future episodes. Okay, um, it is time again for us to revisit the topic of changes that are coming into the industry. Actually, the changes are upon us. I'm recording this on August 12th. Today is the official day of major changes for the state of South Carolina. Now, these changes did not have to be done until August 17th, but in South Carolina, we're a little bit ahead of the curve. We got these changes done uh, earlier. What changes am I talking about? The changes I'm talking about are that the National Association of Realtors had to settle a bunch of lawsuits. There were all sorts of lawsuits uh, d- over a range of issues, all kind of related to realtor commissions. And the lawsuits essentially claimed that the entire real estate industry, uh, under the uh, oversight of the National Association of Realtors, was committing antitrust violations uh, by uh, price fixing when it came to commissions. That commissions were always the same amount across the board, that somehow there was this big conspiracy. None of that is true. Um, Nonetheless, a jury... Uh, that was very hand-selected by the prosecution, um, and that uh, I could I could get into a lot of details about the jury selection. It was basically uh, done in such a way that the National Association of Realtors simply was not going to win. Um, the The juries concluded that yes, there were antitrust violations, um, and as a result of that, the National Association of Realtors could either appeal. The, the case, and they felt like maybe they would win the appeal, but the problem is that there were other lawsuits coming down, and it w- would have bankrupted the organization, it would have bankrupted the industry if they had kept having to appeal every single lawsuit, because once they lost one, they were going to win, they were going to lose the others, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and so the only tenable solution for them and for local MLSs, local realtors associations, was essentially to settle. Now, there uh, were a lot of things that happened as part of the settlement. A lot of money uh, is going out as a result of it. It's not money that's going to really see the consumer's pockets, uh, even though that's allegedly what the whole lawsuit was about. Um, But it is primarily money that's going in the attorney's pockets, which is what it is. That's just the way it works. Um, But... The primary things that we are talking about today is not money that was spent or anything like that. It is the changes that were agreed to as part of this settlement that the National National Association of Realtors did. Um, and the primary changes involved, again, compensation, how agents are compensated, and how we have to communicate that compensation. Now... I don't know because this topic is going to be a very hot topic this week and in future weeks. I might get some listeners and or viewers from outside of the state of South Carolina uh, that are tuning into this content. I'm just going to warn you, this is a Greenville, South Carolina podcast, and I am only going to be talking about my perspective as a South Carolina realtor. The things that I say on here may not may not apply. <clears throat> Excuse me. Had a frog in my throat there for a second. Um, the uh, the things I talk about on here may not apply to someone in New York or Missouri or Texas or Arkansas. I, I don't know. 
I don't know those states. I'm not involved in those states. I am only involved uh, in, and I'm only knowledgeable about real real estate here in the state of South Carolina. <clears throat> so just keep that in mind. Also, nothing I'm saying on here constitutes advice or uh, price fixing. I'm not going to mention any specific percentages when it comes to commissions because we've been told not to do that for antitrust reasons. So um, so keep all of that in mind as we're talking about uh, about this topic. Okay, with that groundwork laid, here is kind of the the big picture of what we need to think about. And then I'll get into what this means for buyers and sellers of real estate. I'm not, you know, we've talked about this a lot from realtor perspective, but I want to talk about it from your perspective, you, the consumer. The most common compensation model in residential real estate for the past 30 years in South Carolina has been a very simple model, which was that a seller lists their home with a listing agent, not a requirement, right? Sellers could always do for sale by owners, um, but they would typically list with a listing agent and there would be a negotiation between the seller and the listing agent on what the total commission would be for selling the home. Now, as probably a lot of people know, about 30 years ago, buyer agency became introduced in the state of South Carolina. <clears throat> and and buyer agency was essentially a way to uh, fulfill a need in the marketplace, which was that buyers felt like they needed representation. They, they didn't like that only sellers had the listing agents representing them. And then buyers had to go to the listing agent who already had a fiduciary duty to the uh, to the seller and not to them. And so buyers were getting the short end of the stick in terms of representation. So about 30 years ago, they created buyer agency uh, in the state of South Carolina and in many other states. And the natural conclusion when you uh, have something like this, um, you have the listing agent and they're mostly doing marketing, trying to get a buyer to come through the house and then, but then the buyer agents was typically the ones actually bringing the buyers. So then the buyer agents need to be compensated. Well, the logical way to do that was to simply split the compensation in half. And even though the listing agent got all the compensation, uh, slide over here a little bit, um, even though the listing agent got all the compensation in theory, uh, they would end up creating a compensation agreement with buyer agents whereby they would split their uh, commission with the buyer's agent, which only made sense, right? Because the buyer agent was the one that actually brought the buyer. The listing agent helped the buyer to find the house. So it's kind of a match made in heaven, right? The listing agent's not going to take all the commission. The buyer's agent doesn't need to pay an additional commission uh, because all of this has already kind of been handled in, in a variety of ways. The commission has already been set. Um, and so it can just be split between the two parties. And, and so here's, let's just simplify this, right? Let's say, and again, I'm not going to talk percentages. Um, I probably shouldn't even talk dollar figures, but um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't see a harm in that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And just to be clear, there's a lot of compensation models out there for listing agents. There are some uh, listing agents that only charge a flat fee, some that charge a percentage, a combination of the two. Um, so there, just know that there's not one size fits all when it comes to uh, realtor compensation. There's a lot of models out there. Um, but most people think about the uh, percent model, but we can't talk about that. So I'm just going to talk about the the flat fee idea, right? Let's say that you had a listing where the seller was paying a $20,000 commission to the listing agent at closing once the house sells, but the listing agent didn't find the buyer. A buyer's agent brought the buyer. Usually what would happen then is that half that commission, half that twenty thousand would be split, ten thousand to the listing agent, ten thousand to the buyer's agent. Now a lot of people think about it as like, well, the seller is paying for the buyer's agent. Well, that's that's not really accurate. What's actually happening is the seller is paying that amount to the listing agent, and the listing agent is simply sharing part of their commission with the buyer's agent, which is again is fair because the buyer's agent actually brought a buyer. Um, so I think that that's an important uh, an important distinction. Now, there's an additional layer to this, though, and that is that the compensation that is offered 
by the listing brokerage, okay? And by the way, let, there's a lot of complexity. Let me try to simplify something here. You've got listing uh, brokerages, you've got listing agents, okay? I'm gonna be using both terms, buyer broker brokerages and buyer agents. I'm gonna be using all of these terms at different times. What does it mean? The brokerage is the company. A real estate agent, me as a real estate agent in South Carolina, I have to be with a brokerage, okay? Now, can I own my own brokerage? Yes, in theory, but there are a lot of reasons why I don't want to do that. Um, and so I work for a brokerage specifically, it's a long name, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, C. Dan Joyner Realtors, Midtown. Um, and so there's the brokerage, and then I am an agent of that brokerage. So if you're a buyer or a seller and you want to become my client, you're a seller, you want me to help you list and sell your home, you're a buyer, you want me to help you find and purchase a home, you have to become a client of my company with me as an agent of that company. That's a common misconception. My clients, they are my clients, but they're a client of my company. And actually, if I were to leave C. Dan Joyner Realtors, the, the shorthand, we don't always just say the Berkshire Hathaway version of it. Um, if I were to leave C. Dan Joyner Realtors and I had a bunch of buyer and seller clients at the time that I left, I would actually have to get permission from the company to release those clients to to basically the new company that I'm working for. Um, and they're not, not necessarily obligated to do that. Now, good companies do that. Um, and there are a lot of bad companies in Greenville that don't do that. If you're an agent listening to this, I recommend that that is something that you very much vet out. If you're looking around at, at uh, different brokerages, find out what their policy is in terms of how they handle it when someone leaves, do they get to bring their clients with them or will the brokerage fight them tooth and nail over keeping those clients? If you do need a company, if you're an agent listening in on this and you need some help with all of this, my team, the Morgan Group, we are looking for new agents. I will personally mentor you and train you. You can light me up all hours of the day or night. Um, and so let me know, again, my contact information is in the show notes. Um, but man, that was a, that was a crazy aside. I don't know. I don't know where all that came from. Um, long story short, we have buyer's agents who are working for their, uh, their brokerage. Um, and buyer agents have to have an agreement in the state of South Carolina with their buyer clients. And, and now after this week, this is one thing that's being rolled out nationwide is that all over the country, buyer's agents are going to have to have written agreements with their buyer clients. That hasn't been the case in most states in the in the U.S. until this year. South Carolina, we've been ahead of the curve. We've had this in place for uh, roughly 30 years now. And so we have a buyer agency agreement that essentially is, uh, clarifies what my fiduciary responsibilities are to the buyer client and then what the buyer client's responsibilities are to me as their agent and uh, to see Dan Joyner Realtors as uh, the, the brokerage that I work under. And part of all of that is the compensation side of things. So the buyer agency agreement actually states that the buyer is responsible to compensate their agent. How much? Well, that's the part that's negotiable, right? Now, the thing is that buyer agents like myself, I have plenty of clients, I can set my fee, and if people don't wanna pay it, they can go to someone cheaper that's not gonna offer them the kind of service that I offer them. And that is totally fine. I don't lose any sleep over any time that uh, that I lose someone over, over that. If someone just wants to get less service, maybe they bought a bunch of houses, they don't need full service. I don't know. I don't judge people on any of that. Um, I, I don't lose sleep over that. The, the times that I lose sleep are when people say they don't wanna be my client over something else because they feel like they might get better service from another agent. That's when I lose sleep. Doesn't happen often, uh, but maybe I have a bad day when I'm giving a presentation. I don't give my best presentation, um, and that happens. Who knows? Um, but the buyer agent form has a variety of fields in it that can be filled in, again, negotiable, um, that outline what sort of compensation that the buyer's agent is going to receive as part of the transaction. 
could be a percent, it could be a flat fee, there could be retainer fees, there could be service fees, there's all sorts of different things that can be in there. But the point of me saying this is that um, buyers have been used to, in their mind, the sellers paying for buyer agents, right? Even though I've already said the seller is only indirectly doing that, it's really the listing agent that is compensating uh, the buyer's agent, but the listing agent is doing it with the seller's money, so it does make sense why people just kind of jump to the conclusion that the sellers are doing it. But for a while, right, until probably 2018, it was pretty commonplace that um, buyer agents almost never, uh, yeah, buyer agents almost never received money directly from their buyer clients. Uh, well, that started to, to shift as uh, home prices got more expensive, um, and as you know, the market became more and more of a seller's market, became easier to sell homes, listing agents started to uh, started to, you know, essentially have to reduce commissions that they were making because again, it's all negotiable. And um, when it's a seller's market, sellers have the power, right? And so sellers are able, they have more negotiating ability. And so they were able to drive down uh, commissions uh, gradually over the course of the years. And so what happened was, is that it, the past few years, there's been a lot more buyers that have had to actually pay their buyer's agent because let's say that they agreed to pay their buyer agent $5,000, uh, but the listing agent, the listing brokerage is only offering $3,000 uh, as part of, you know, if you close with them, then the buyer at that point has to make up the difference, the extra $2,000. Um, and so that is something that, that that's not something new okay that's been in place for a long time but that's something to keep that's really important here because there's a very good possibility even though this has been going on now with regularity for for you know five or six years there's a good chance that this becomes a much bigger part of this whole process moving forward and it's certainly something i'm going to have to explain in a lot more detail to all of my clients moving uh moving forward now I've always been very upfront with all of my buyer clients if they're making an offer on a home that will in some way, shape, or form require for them to pay some or all of my commission. Why I hate uh, any sort of surprises. I, I don't even like good surprises in a real estate transaction. All surprises are bad. I want the entire real estate transaction to be predictable, to go exactly how we expect it to, and for there to be no surprises, not even a good surprise. I come. I am of the opinion that all surprises are bad surprises in a real estate transaction. Um, and if there's a good surprise, and uh, I, I'm still not super happy about it, um, but better than a bad one, but I just like to eliminate all of them, right? Let's make, let's all know what's going to happen over the course of these next few weeks while you're under contract. And there's no worse surprise than getting to the end of your contract and finding out that you owe more money than you thought you did. Oh, and not only that, but you owe more money than you thought you did to me. That is not a surprise that I want to spring on anyone. So if ever there was a transaction um, that, uh, or a potential transaction where my client would have to compensate me without knowing it, I'd always make sure before we ever submit an offer, in some cases, before we even look at a home, let my client know, just FYI, here is what you agreed to compensate me. Here is what I'm, what you're getting, what you're paying for, for my service. And here is what the listing agent is offering. It doesn't make the full amount. So if we make an offer on this home, A, I will try to get the seller to make up the difference, okay? Well, we can ask for them to pay for to, to pay for concessions, um, which some people call, you know, seller paying for buyer closing costs. There are other forms of concessions than that, um, but we can try to get them to pay for concessions to make up the difference. But if they, if they won't do that, then you're going to end up paying this extra amount at closing. Here's the exact amount. Um, so I always make sure that people know that right off the bat. And for the most part, outside of like that really crazy seller's market from 2021 through 2022, very few of my buyer clients, except for my investor clients, um, for a variety of reasons, I, I, we'll talk about that another day. Investor clients tend to uh, look at unique properties, sometimes off-market things, 
Um, and, and sometimes they have to pay for my entire commission because we might not be looking at things on MLS. Um, but um, the, the vast majority of the time for just my standard retail home buyers and home sellers, uh, if we're looking at a home where the seller and the listing agent, they're not paying enough to cover my entire commission, almost all the time I was able to negotiate once we made the offer, right? Because that's when you have all the leverage is when you're making the offer, able to negotiate for the seller to go ahead and pay up that little bit extra difference so that my client didn't have to do that. Um, and again, there was a short period of time from 21 through 22 where, where we couldn't do that. It was just too crazy. The sellers had all the leverage, um, but it's come back. And now, you know, it's, it's becoming more common again for sellers to have to do that. So, Everything I've said so far is what's been true in the past, and all of that remains true moving forward, at least within the framework that we're currently familiar with from the National Association of Realtors, from the South Carolina Association, and from the Greenville Asso the Greater Greenville Association. So what is changing? All right, now we get to the good stuff. First off, Buyer agents can no longer show homes to customers or clients. A customer is an unrepresented buyer. A client is a represented uh, buyer represented by a realtor. Buyer agents can no longer show homes to any parties without a written agreement between the buyer and the buyer's agent in place. Now, currently in Greenville, where I'm located, the only paperwork that I have to cover this is the exclusive right to buy buyer agency agreement, which in South Carolina is the contract that specifies that I am only that I am working with you and that I have a fiduciary duty to you as my buyer client, and you are only working with me. You are not contacting other agents, other realtors. You are only working with me, and you will compensate me if you if we have a closing or if you have a closing on any house. Uh, for sale by owner, on MLS, not on MLS, whatever the case may be, if you have any closing during the period the period of time of that buyer agency agreement, you will compensate me unless I'm able to get compensation out of the transaction through the seller, through the listing brokerage, et cetera, et cetera. I can no longer show you any house unless we have that agreement in place. Now, it's possible that there will be some kind of a new sort of agreement, a showing agreement or something like that. Um, it, you know, and, and it's possible even so that perhaps my brokerage uh, will produce paperwork like that. My brokerage, I, I work for a, a pretty large brokerage, so sometimes they produce their own paperwork. Um, if they don't feel like the South Carolina Association of Realtors uh, is, is doing a, a good job on their front with the paperwork. So there's a lot of possibilities here. Um, but currently, there's only one possibility as I'm speaking right now, and that is you, if you want me to show you a house, you must sign the buyer agency agreement. Now, it could be a very short agreement. Let's say that you're, you know, you want to kind of see what I'm like, uh, right? Which is a completely reasonable thing if you're wanting to work with a buyer's agent. Some people like to interview multiple agents. Well, you can't really get a sense of what they're like unless you look at houses with them. So maybe you want to sign a one day or a one week agreement and just kind of see how that goes, look at some houses, and then I can actually show you uh, what I can do as an agent. Um, that is a, kind of a workaround that could be done and the National Association of Realtors even said so much. Um, but that's the, that's the first thing. I, wa I, I wanna lead with that rather than all this commission and compensation stuff because I feel like that is going to be a big change to a lot of people. And I think it's very important that we get out in front of that right on the front end. No more people calling me up and just being like, hey, Stan, I saw this house. Can you show it to me? And me being like, well, we don't have an agreement in place. That's okay. I'll just do this one as a freebie. Nope. Can't do that anymore. There's no more freebies. We've got to get the paperwork in place on the front end. And I think some consumers are going to be really put off by that. But it is what it is. This is the rule. This is the law. It is a settlement that was agreed to, and this is what we as realtors have to do to protect ourselves. And I'm sure that there will be some realtors that don't do it. Um, and good luck to them. Those are the realtors that aren't going to last in this industry very long. Um, what's another thing that, that is changing? Well, 
this is another big one. This is the one that that really it, most people are talking about, whether directly or, or indirectly. Um, a listing agent can no longer advertise on the multiple listing service how much compensation they are sharing with a buyer's agent or brokerage. They still can share a portion of their commission with a buyer's agent or brokerage, and they can still tell people that on platforms that are not the multiple listing service, but they can't do it on the multiple listing service. So I will be doing this on my website for any listings that I have, my personal website, non-MLS. I'll be putting on there uh, what commission is being offered to a buyer's agent. Obviously, people can text, call, do things of that, do things like that. Um, But when you're searching on MLS, it's not going to be on there. And this is a little bit frustrating for me uh, because this was was a a very quick and easy way to be able to, you know, for my clients that were cash strapped and I work with a lot of first time home buyers. So a lot of my clients aren't super duper wealthy and it sometimes it was really important to be able to see very quickly, okay, will my entire buyer agency fee be covered by the listing agent or not. Well, now there are some additional steps that we have to take in order to clarify that because I can no longer just quickly look on MLS and see it. It's not there anymore. They deleted the field. It's gone. Um, and uh, and and so that is uh, just the reality. It's frustrating, uh, but it's it's something that had to be done in order to get the Department of Justice off the backs of the National Association of Realtors. <clears throat> Now, further to this, a seller, and by extension, the listing brokerage, can decline to offer any compensation to a buyer's agent. They can say, we're not giving them anything. We don't want buyer's agents. Zero percent, zero dollar commission. And if that's the case, then the entire compensation for the buyer's agent becomes negotiable when an offer is made, right? Just because they say we're not going to do it doesn't mean they're not going to do it, right? I, trust me, I have this all the time. Listing agents will be like, yeah, my client's not going to pay for closing costs. Well, let me make you an offer and see what they say. And then you make an offer and turns out they are willing to, to pay for closing costs in order to get their house under contract. Same thing with these realtor uh, compensation things. If, if a listing says uh, or doesn't say that they're offering any sort of compensation, obviously they're not going to say we're not offering it um, because also that would be an antitrust violation too, um, but if they're if they're if they're thinking we're not going to offer it, we're not going to advertise anywhere that we're offering a commission. And if if an agent calls and asks, are we offering a commission? We're just going to say no. You can still make an offer and ask for them to pay for it. Right? There's nothing preventing you from doing that. And a listing agent is required by law to present every single offer that they get. So they have to present the offer. Now, a little tip. And, and this is this is going to be a whole nother thing, okay? Really? Buyer agents should not be even showing houses unless there is already that compensation agreement in place. That is that is a whole thing. And, and this is, I don't know if compensation agreements, you know, uh, this is the part of it that I'm not sure how it's all going to shake out. Um, but generally speaking, if I have a buyer client that can't afford me without getting some help from the seller or listing agent, I am going to recommend to them we should not show any houses unless we already have a comp- unless I'm able to get a compensation agreement in place for this home because otherwise you're going to look at it and then realize that you can't afford it and that's a terrible situation for everyone. Listen, I can't work for free, obviously. I think every reasonable person gets that, but I also hate for my compensation to get in the way of someone else getting a house. But again, unfortunately, this is the world that we live in now. And some people are, I've already heard some people say, well, we don't have to pay buyer's agents anymore. Um, Yeah, we'll come back to that in a second. But technically, you are true. Technically, technically it's true that sellers, listing brokerages do not have to offer any sort of compensation to a buyer's agent. Um, And if a compensation agreement was not done in advance uh, of going under contract, 
then there is a very good possibility that the buyer's agent and the buyer are going to have a major problem mid-transaction when they realize that the buyer's agent is going to have to pay the full, uh, sorry, the buyer's going to have to pay the full buyer agent commission uh, that they agreed to in the exclusive right to buy agreement that they had uh, that they had each signed earlier. However, let me say this as well, because I just said that uh, some listing agents and some sellers might be not offering compensation to buyer's agents anymore. Individual brokerages can still require their listing agents and seller clients to offer certain compensation amounts. Just because the National Association of Realtors wants us to tell sellers that they don't have to compensate a buyer agent, that doesn't mean that they can can force my company to not do that. Does that make sense? Um, my company still has policies and every single, whether you go to a Keller Williams or a Coldwell Banker or an EXP real estate or a Remax or an Allen Tate or real broker or whoever, um, then there's all sorts of boutique companies as well. Um, you go with any of these and they all have policies and procedures and they all have, the good ones at least, have policies when it comes to commissions. And they can still specify for listings or for buyer clients, this is what our agents are expected to uh, to be compensated in terms of their commissions. Um, and so that's something very important to keep in mind. I cannot give a 0% uh, buyer agent or a $0 buyer agent amount on a listing. Why? Because my company doesn't allow it. It's a bad idea. Um, and again, I'm going to get get to that in a second. But we want to actually sell the listings that we get. And we want to sell them for top dollar. And we believe that the only way to do that is to actually pay a buyer's agent and to make sure that the uh, that the full market is accessible and able to see the property that is for sale. I'm going to get into more specifics on that and how it affects you. But before I do that, we need to talk about the sponsor for selling Greenville, which is Piper Insurance Group. Great company. I use them for my own home and auto insurance. They also do umbrella insurance as well. Um, and I highly recommend them to you guys if you need home, auto, or umbrella insurance in South Carolina, North Carolina, or Georgia. They are the ones you need to contact. They're an independent insurance agency, so that they can quote with multiple different companies and give you the best price that comes back rather than just being, you know, a traveler's company or a state farm company or a Geico. They can quote a bunch of different companies and come back with the best rate possible for you. Um, and if you're an investor, good news, they can help you with investment properties as well, flips, rentals, ground up new construction, uh, all of that, commercial properties as well. So please reach out to Piper Insurance today. Ask them for a free quote. Their contact information is in the show notes if you need home, auto, or umbrella insurance in any of those states that I mentioned before. All right. How does all this commissions and whatnot stuff, the settlement stuff affect you. Okay, let's go through this real quick here. First off, if you're an active buyer client with me or with any other realtor in South Carolina, you're going to need to redo your buyer agency paperwork because now we have all new paperwork uh, for all of these changes. It's the reality of the situation. The old paperwork is gone, the new has come, um, and now we have to redo paperwork. So that's something that I will be uh, sending to, uh, probably by the time this goes out, I will already have sent it to all of my buyer clients. Um, and so that's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. The, I'm not changing the terms of, of these agreements. I'm not sliding anything shysty into there. Um, it's just that we need the updated forms to be used for all of our clients. So that's going to happen. Secondly, Buyers can still assume that most of the time, I think, at least part of their commission for their buyer's agent will be covered by the listing brokerage. But I do think that there will still be a major adjustment period in terms of figuring out how much listing brokerages are offering to buyer's agents and what paperwork is needed or what process is needed to confirm that commission amount. So there's going to be a lot of learning curves ahead here. I mean, it is... Yeah, it's going to be crazy. I'm not looking forward to 
uh, this transition. It's not going to be easy. I think it'll be good in the long run. Um, but it's going to be a difficult transition. We're not exactly sure when the dust settles what it will all mean. Um, but it's something that buyers are going to have to be patient as they deal with this because it's going to be a new system. And there are going to be some sellers that are going to be like, well, heck, I'm gonna, I'm not going to offer anything. Or I'm going to offer bare, you know, I'm going to offer 500 bucks. A buyer's agent doesn't do more than 500 hours <laughs> worth of work. Um, yeah, a buyer's agent that, uh, that, doesn't do it full time, right? How many people want a buyer's agent that's not a full time agent and has never been a full time agent in their life? They don't know what they're doing. Like, let's just be honest. Let's be honest. They don't know what they're doing. Only the full time agents know what they're doing. I talked to both of them. You can tell right away. It's very easy to tell if someone's a part time agent because they because I have to end up educating them on things. Um, so uh, I'm I'm sorry for that little rant there. But these people that want to cut out buyer agent commissions, what they're really saying is they don't want there to be any full-time buyer agents, and that doesn't help anyone. If buyer agents are going to be here, they need to be full-time, in my opinion. Um, that's a whole aside, uh, but but thinking big picture on it, I, I just wanted to mention that. Let me also say this. With regard to lenders... We have an interesting thing that is going to happen here. Again, a learning curve, a period of filling things out where I don't know exactly how lenders are going to handle this, but let's say that I don't want, or let's say that my buyer client doesn't want to or can't pay me for my entire buyer agent commission. They want the seller or listing brokerage to cover all or some of that. There are, in the state of South Carolina, uh, essentially two simple ways that I can do that. One is we have an actual compensation agreement that specifies who's paying, to whom, and how much, and under what conditions. Great form, very simple. We're going to be using it a lot in the upcoming months. The other way to do it is to just basically have the buyer pay the commission, but have the seller reimburse the buyer in the form of concessions again okay this is what we talked about before um when the seller is paying for a part of the buyer's closing costs that is a form of a seller concession okay now here's where things get tricky loans lenders uh that are in hold on let me back up for a second lenders that are providing loans got my tongue tied <laughs> there for a second it's been a long day I'm um, recording this at 7.40 p.m. I'm ready to go to bed. Um, <laughs> lenders that are providing various loan products have limits on how much seller concessions can be. Typically, it's between 3 to 9% of the purchase price. And and it, d- it depends on a lot of factors, whether it's 3% or whether it's 4 or 6% or 9% or whatever the case may be. But you cannot give more concessions. If you're selling a house to a buyer, you can't get more concessions than what that buyer is allowed to get within the framework of that loan. So what happens if the buyer is allowed to get, say, 6% of seller concessions? Let's say the buyer, they can't pay their closing costs. They need to do a rate buy down and all sorts of other things. So they need to get an entire 6% of their purchase price back from the seller in the form of a concession. What happens if I also, as a buyer's agent, need to be compensated without that money? Because you can do it that the buyer pays for the commission and then is is paid for it back in the form of that concession. But what if the buyer can't even do that? What if they need the concession and also need for the uh, for their buyer agent to be fully compensated as well? Well, that compensation agreement is different than the concession. But will every lender see it that way? And will Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac at the end of the day see it that way as well? Well, my understanding so far is Fannie has not made a determination on this and they're kind of waiting and seeing. And my understanding from lenders I've spoken to is that some lenders have already decided Fannie hasn't done anything. And so we are going to accept both concessions and compensation agreements as separate things. And so you could completely max out the concession max for your loan and also have, you know, your buyer agent being compensated by who knows how much, whatever you've negotiated that to be. 
On the flip side, I think that there are going to be other lenders with stricter standards that are concerned that Fannie may change some things and that they are going to say, you know what, if whatever you're, you know, if, if you have a compensation agreement that is a part of this transaction, that counts as a seller concession. In other words, if I as an agent am being compensated $10,000, then that $10,000 will go against the uh, the concession amounts. Let's say that the concession amount was, you know, up to $20,000, depending on on the, you know, the purchase price and, and the concession max and all of that. Now, if, if you can't pay for your buyer agent and the buyer agent commission is half of that, now you've just reduced the amount that you can ask for in terms of closing costs and concessions from the seller. So this is going to be a new layer that we need to verify with lenders. Listings, listing agents, sellers are going to have to call up those lenders if they get an offer that is asking for both concessions and compensation. They're going to have to call up lenders to make sure that that the lender is willing to do that, that the lender's guidelines allow them to do that. Buyers who can't pay for all of their closing costs and also can't pay for their buyer agent commissions need to make sure that they're with a lender that's okay with a seller paying for all the closing costs and all of the commissions as well. Um, and so these are things that are really, really important details that we need to start thinking about now. <laughs> uh, because again, super duper important. Um, now I've already kind of referenced this in passing, but my company, C. Dan Jordan Realtors, will continue to require compensation to buyers agents that that we do as by means of uh, of sharing our listing commission, because that's the only way to really ensure that you're not harming the marketability of your listings. Now you might be cynically saying. Well, how would it market the uh, how would it harm the marketability if realtors aren't allowed to steer their clients? Well, I've got news for you. Clients steer themselves. And the reality is that again, if you are a buyer and you can't afford to pay your buyer's agent, but you need a buyer's agent, you can't afford to not have one, then you're only looking at homes that can and will pay for your buyer agent for you. So you are just going to not look at all the homes that are, are neglecting to compensate a buyer agent. Well, guess what? The vast majority of buyers in this historically unaffordable market cannot pay for their buyer's agent. That is the reality of the situation. You know who's sitting on all the money? It's the sellers. All these people that bought their homes in 21 and 20 and 2020 get, you know, have a nice 2% mortgage rate. They've got so much equity. They got 50 or 60% equity over, over what they bought the house for. They have tons of money. The reality is, Guys, I hate to say it, but if there's going to be buyer's agents, it's going to be subsidized in some way by sellers. And if you're a seller and you're in denial about that, uh, I'm sorry. You can absolutely choose to say, I am not going to compensate a buyer's agent. But what you're going to do is you're going to eliminate 60% of the buyers in the market from being able to make an offer on your home. Do you want to do that? Do you want to only look at 40% of the market? That is a terrible strategy. That is a terrible way to approach economics. And I don't think it's a good way to sell a house. Uh, because at the end of the day, yeah, maybe you saved uh, a few thousand dollars on a commission, but how much did you lose by not having the full market looking at your house? I would argue there's no data for this because again, uh, we, we don't exactly know how this is all gonna play out. But I would argue uh, that Probably in most instances, those homes will end up selling for less net than what they would have net, even including commissions, if the entire buyer agent commission had been paid by the seller. And most intelligent real estate investors and people like that, that uh, that don't have skin in the game uh, from a realtor standpoint, but understand how basic economics work, most of them agree fully with me. And there's a reason why I, when I flip houses, I am willing to, to compensate buyer's agents handsomely because I see their value and I don't want to uh, you know, eliminate potential buyer clients that or, or potential buyers for, for my houses and for my listings uh, because they can't afford their agent and they're just not going to look at it. I don't want to do that. That's a really bad strategy and I highly, highly don't recommend it. 
That said, if you are a seller or a potential seller, you absolutely have the option to list your home or your property, whatever, with a firm that does not require buyer agent compensation. Like I said, my firm does already, um, but there are going to be plenty of firms that don't. There are, are already firms that don't. Um, and so you will absolutely end up paying a lower commission amount. But remember what I've already said, and remember this as well. When looking at comps to determine the home value, I highly recommend that you note uh, whether or not a listing has paid an entire buyer agency agreement or not. Now, you might not have a way to check that, uh, but you need to, even if you can't check it, you need to keep in the back of your mind that most likely listings for the past year paid for at least part, if not all, of the buyer agent commission. And you cannot compare, it's not apples to apples comparing a listing that was marketable to the entire market versus a listing that you're proposing not offering any buyer agent commission that's only going to go out to a small portion of the market or that's only going to be affordable to a small portion of the market that is not a true comp so you're going to have to start making some adjustments in terms of of how you analyze properties and how you analyze comps and you're you're not going to like the end result of that is just the reality of the situation because you think your neighbor that offered you know a huge buyer agent commission and sold their home uh, for top of the market, you think that you can do that without compensating a buyer agent? That's ridiculous. That's just not how it works. Uh, but I know, I know that people are going to think that, and so I just want to nip that in the bud right away. Um, and as I've already said before, um, obviously at the end of the day, I do truly believe. I am not just saying this. I am not just saying this because this is none of this is going to be a problem for me. I've been ready for this for months. I'm prepared for all of this. But I'm telling you right now, you limiting the number of people that can buy your home is a bad thing and you will, I believe, be better off offering some sort of compensation to a buyer agent. Uh, but that's something for you to, to, to look at and crunch numbers and discuss different marketing strategies with different agents um, if you're selling a home. And then you can make that judgment call because it is up to you all of this is negotiable, and uh, and and you can figure out what you feel best about at the end of the day. So it's gonna be it's gonna be a crazy next few months. We got a presidential election coming up. We've got the possible rate cuts from the Fed coming up. We've got all of these changes that are that are here upon us right now. Um, but I'm ready for it. I'm excited, and I want to work with you guys. So if you need a buyer agent or a listing agent in Greenville, let me know. My contact information is in the show notes. Happy to talk to you guys. If you're just trying to feel out about Greenville, I'm happy to just have a conversation with you guys. Let me know. Shoot me a text. Shoot me an email. However you want to reach out. Piper Insurance Group. If you need home auto umbrella insurance, reach out to them. Their contact information is also in the show notes. And if you enjoy this content, please like, rate, review, subscribe, comment, all of those good things. Sorry, I got a little excited there. Uh, <laughs> any way that you can support the show, I'd appreciate you guys. And uh, so thank you guys for watching or listening, and we will talk again next time.